Uh, first of all, thank you guys for coming in. Uh, my name is Chip Smith with Hammersmith Sports. My dad's Chip. Um, what I want to talk to you guys about in here today is hips. Um, it's, in my opinion, and a lot of coaches, the most important part of your body within, with, with respects to football, really any sports. Um, but it's also one of the most misunderstood parts of the body. Um, I, I tell my athletes every day when they're in here, your hips are the center of your sporting universe. Doesn't matter if you're football, basketball, swimming, tennis, you can't run, jump, move, even take a step without your hips activating first. Okay, so hips are super important. And what I hope to do is show you guys some stuff that can help your athletes um, increase performance, decrease injury, um, and just give you guys some good exercises so that your athletes stay healthy, you know, throughout the season and off season. Uh, how many of you guys are strength coaches in here uh, by position at the school? Okay, a couple of you guys. All right, cool. Um, so this may be some stuff that you guys are already doing. Um, and if it is, that's awesome. If not, I would encourage you, if you're not currently doing a, a HIP program, to start doing it because it can make a big difference. Um, let, let's just talk a little bit first about um, the anatomy of the hip, okay? So the hip is like the shoulder. It's a very complex um, joint. It, it does a lot of things. It can do a lot of things at the same time. So, for example, we've got, uh, we've got hip flexion, which is basically bringing the knee up. We've got abduction to the side. We've got extension to the back. But there's also intermediate planes in there where you can go extension and abduction at the same time. You can go extension, abduction, and rotation. And all these are controlled by pretty small muscle groups, okay? And these are the muscles that stabilize the knee on cutting, stabilize the knee on landing from a jump. Um, and if you're weak, primarily in the gluteus medius is what we're going to talk a lot about today. If you're weak in these muscles, then you're going to be at more risk for injury, ACL tears, meniscus tears, uh, patella tendonitis, um, IT band problems. All this stems from having weakness in the hips. Okay, so when you're talking about injury with the knee, the knee is controlled uh, from extension and flexion of the knee by the quad and the hamstrings, but those have nothing to do with rotation. Those are purely linear movements. Okay, so rotation of the, uh, rotation of the knee is controlled by that, that, hip, that hip. All right, so if you're weak there, when you go to plant and cut and come back the other way, if that knee is not stabilizing or if that knee is not stabilized by the hip, when you go to make that cut, what happens? The knee collapses and then you get what happened to RG3, blown out ACL from just non-contact cut. Okay, so that's what we want to try to eliminate. Contact injuries, it's contact. It's going to happen, but stuff that happened to RG3, non-contact cutting, jumping and landing and tearing an ACL, we can not necessarily completely eliminate it, but greatly reduce that by making sure we have good, strong hips, okay? Um, so back to the, uh, back to gluteus medius. If, you, if you're weak and that knee is rotating, that creates the shearing forces, the torque on the knee, which, you know, tears those ACLs. Um, so oh, let's get everybody to kind of get a spot. I want to show you guys some testing. And a lot of the stuff we're going to talk about in here doesn't take a lot of time. It doesn't take any money. All you need is space and a hand, and you can put your, put your athletes through these tests, um, and then you can put them through the exercises as part of your pre-workout, but before you're working out in the weight room, before your pre-practice warm-up, part of your uh, mobility circuit, if you guys do any kind of that stuff. But it's, it's, not time, it's not time intensive, five, six minutes at the most, and you can get a good, uh, good bit of work on the hips, okay? So, First and, first and foremost, let's figure out who, who has weak hips, okay? So how do, you, how do you do that? So here's a few basic tests to kind of progress you into figuring out, you know, which one of my athletes has weak hips, who might need additional help, additional work. Okay, so the first one, uh, what's your name? Daniel. Daniel, if you don't mind being my, you're the only one with shorts that I see, so <laughs> appreciate it. You're going to be my demonstrator today, okay? If you don't mind, pull you, if you, if you can tuck your short up under your or just roll them up or something so we can see your knee. So the first one, what I, what I would do, you know, with my team is I would just line them up. So, okay, hey guys, we're going to do a, just a, some basic tests. So the first test is just standing on one leg. All right, so let's see you stand on one leg. All right, not bad. Everybody should, for the most part, be able to stand on one leg without any problems. If you've got a knee injury, an ankle injury, 
a concussion, vestibular dysfunction, then you may not be able to stand on one leg, okay? So that would be an indicator right there. Hey, something's wrong. Doesn't really tell us what, but now we need to look further and figure out what it is, okay? If they've got a severe imbalance in the hip, they're not going to be able to stand on one leg without shaking and wobbling, okay? So imagine that he's coming off an ACL injury, okay? He just tore his ACL. He's six months post, hadn't finished his rehab, whatever. He may be he may be shaking a little unstable, okay? If you just got complete weakness, you would see the same thing, okay? So now the second kind of phase of this test. Now we're just going to go a static hold at about a quarter squat. All right, let's see you do it. All right, so he's a little unstable. When he went down, he kind of rotated internally. Not to point you guys out, I know we're all coaches, not athletes in here. Might have been athletes at one point, not currently playing, so that's okay. Slight rotation internally to the knee. Okay, so that might indicate some weakness in that hip. Okay, so now we just want to hold this position. All right, so let's just hold it. All right, so 15 through 20 seconds. As, as time goes on, it might start fatiguing more. He'll get more unstable if he does have uh, an instability. Okay, now we want to go five quarter squats. All right, let me see you do five quarter squats. And we're looking for the knee to track in line with the toe. No internal rotation. Obviously, balance uh, is coming into play as that as well. So if, if he's losing his balance, if he's, you know, doing the shaky leg, he's wobbling all over, indicator that he might have, uh, you know, weakness. All right, so now that's just an easy one. Line your team up, do those three tests, standing, squatting, five squats. Get your coaching staff, kind of look them out. Just, okay, you, 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 and you, you guys got weak knees, so we need to do further tests on you, okay? Um, now, the second uh, test, let me have you hop up on a table. I want you guys to do this uh, together. So get a partner, get a group of three or four, whatever, uh, little small groups. I'm going to show you guys the next test to really look to isolate on the, the medial glute. Okay, so go ahead and lay on the table. Lay up on your side back to me. All right, so like we were saying, the hip does a lot of different motions, okay? Um, on this particular test, we want to try to isolate in the medial glute, that, that, that rotator, okay? The way that we do that is we've got to abduct to the side. So I'm going to abduct him up. All right, so this is abduction to the side, and I'm going to get him about 20 degrees of extension. So abduction itself is only going to hit the abductors primarily in the hip flexor. The extension and abduction is going to hit the medial glute, all right? And that's the primary rotator, the stabilizer of the knee that we're looking at. All right, so from here, I want you to maintain this position. Just hold, hold it. All right, and I'm going to drop your leg. Don't let it fall. All right, see what happens? When I dropped him, he dropped, I mean, six, eight inches of fall because he wasn't able to maintain this position. That's because I'm isolating on that medial glute. Obviously, there's a weakness. He can't hold this position. Um, so when I let go, he falls. So anywhere between uh, four and to the floor shows that he's not strong enough to maintain this position. Now, if I just hold him here, hold it. Just keep holding. So you can see he's starting to shake. He's starting to drop. So that indicates a little bit of a weakness in his hip. Um, so everybody get on the ground. There's a couple coaching points on this. If you're doing this test with your athletes, I want, to, I want to show you a couple coaching points. You can put your leg down. Just stay here for me. So let's just get a partner, get on the ground, get two partners, whatever. The tendency is going to want to be to activate the quad and the hip flexor, okay? So if you notice, I had my hand in his lower back. What he's going to want to do is open his hip and pull with the hip flexor and the quad, okay, instead of the medial glute and part of the abductor, okay? So my job, instead of having him open his hips this way, I want to close him off, all right? So I want to roll him forward from the lower back, have his hip almost tilted forward slightly, then abduct and extend, making sure the knee stays straight, and then hit the drop there, okay? All right, give that a shot. Let them drop. Have them hold that position once they can hold it. Drop it, and if they drop. Okay, all right, now I want to show you guys the next, uh, the next test, okay? So that's for, the, that's for the rotator, the stabilizer, okay? Now we hear, we hear coaches or, we, we, you know, we do a lot with the draft, uh, the guys getting ready for the draft. You hear these analysts on TV say, oh, well, this guy can't play. He's got tight hips or, you know, he, he's got really good loose hips. What exactly does that mean? Where I'm going to show you a couple of tests on how to determine what is a tight hip or what is a loose hip uh, with respects to football or to just the body in general. All right, so the next test, we're going to look at it. So we just looked at abduction extension. 
the medial glute. Now we're gonna look at the gluteus maximus, the main extensor, okay? This, the glute max, is what brings the leg back. All right, so lay on your stomach. All right, so the first test we're gonna do, I'm just gonna have him lift his leg, just bend your knee, bend your knee. All right, I'm just gonna have him lift his foot straight up to the ceiling. And I'm just, I'm just gonna look for a few key things, all right? Not bad. So that's, main, that's mainly the gluteus maximus extending the leg up, a little bit of hamstring. All right, now, if you guys right here can see, go ahead, and, go ahead and do it again. If you notice what happens to the knee, it slightly abducts the side. So as he comes up, the knee rotates slightly outwards. Not as bad as the guy in the first group. And the guy in the first group wasn't bad either. But um, what we want to see is, for the most part, straight up. I mean, a very slight is okay. But uh, I had a few athletes the other day. They had hip flexor pulls. And they couldn't even get their leg up without coming at about that angle there. Now what happens is when you get weakness in the gluteus max, the abductors on the side start taking over. Well, they're not extensors. Again, they're abductors, so they pull to the side. So as you're trying to lift up, they're trying to help out, but they're overpowering the glute, pulling the leg outwards. Okay, so that's an indicator of weakness in the gluteus maximus. Okay, so this test here, just straight up, lift it, hold it. Now I'm gonna manually push him down, and it should take a pretty good amount of force if he's got strong glutes for me to push his leg to the table. Now, fight me on this one, fight it. All right, so not the strongest I've ever felt, but not, definitely not the weakest. <laughs> so so that's, that's the test for the glute max, okay? All right, now we're gonna look at the internal rotators of the, of the hip, all right? Now these are, you're not gonna get a lot of injury or a lot of problems from this, but it's, it's worthwhile just to look at, just to see if there might be any potential problems, okay? Again, the external rotators, the glute max, that's what, or the glute medius, that's what we're talking about when you're talking about cutting. That's what I say is your go muscle. If you look at running backs, um, Zach Stacy, I don't know, you guys follow the Rams at all? Running back for the Rams, played at uh, Vandy. Zach has some of the biggest glutes I've ever seen of anybody. He's about this big, about 235, 240, and just unbelievably huge uh, butt. I mean, it, I literally on, the, on the, uh, the, the drop test, I had to get up on the table and put my weight on his leg just to get him to break down. That's how strong the guy was. But he's a running back, so what is he doing all the time? He's cutting, all right? Cutting, these are your go muscles. If you, want, if you want good explosive athletes off the cut, lateral movement, have them work these, these exercises for the uh, glute medius. Back to saying what we're talking about, the, the internal rotators are not used as much. So they're not gonna be as strong, but they're also not gonna get injured as frequently. But just to test for that, you're gonna throw the uh, ankle behind the knee. All right, I want you to hold your ankle or hold your foot to the back of your knee. Don't let me lift it up. Okay, so I'm going to try to lift his leg. All right, so not bad. Takes a pretty good amount of force to break him from the leg. Um, indicates, you know, decently strong. Now, if he, if he had a weakness or an injury, I would be able to take, just relax. I'd be able to take two fingers and break him up. Leg just goes flopping over, so that might show. Now, if you got an athlete that gets injured in one of the internal rotators, it'll be a high, as high up inside the groin, inside of the glute, if you've ever pulled one, I have, and it's not fun. I mean, it feels like it's like running right up the middle of your body. Um, those, are the, those are the internal rotators. A lot of swimmers will get it from doing breaststroke, from that pulling the leg in, and you'll get, it, you'll get a pull up inside, okay? So that's the internal rotator test for the hip. Again, we're not going to focus a lot on that today. All right, you can hop back up. All right, so now we've talked about kind of the test of the hip. Now... Say you got an athlete that's weak in the glutes, weak in those rotators, how do you fix it? What do you do, all right? So if you look on the board here, and you can just kind of take a peek, I'll go over them. I've got them one, one, two, two, three, three. These are kind of the progressions that you would go through. So one is obviously going to be the easiest. Three is going to be the most difficult, and I'll show you some even more difficult progressions after that. But we're all going to do these together. So everybody lay down on the ground, okay? Everybody just lay, get a spot where you can lay out. The first one, this is, again, this is uh, your, your, basic, um, your basic beginner level exercises. And, and, and like I said, do these pre-workout, do these pre-practice, you know, in your position meetings, you know, when y'all are done going out on the field doing your warm-up stuff, just have your running backs or your, you know, linemen or whoever lay down, do a couple of these exercises as part of their stretch, and, and it'll really make a big difference in a pretty short amount of time. So the first one is just a glute bridge, feet on the floor, sit-up position. All right, now all you're gonna do is just elevate the hips up, squeeze the glutes, 
from the knee to the hip to the shoulder should be all one straight line, okay? I would imagine most of you guys have no problem doing this. Now drop your hips a little bit. If you, if you have a kink in the hip or if he's not able to extend fully, that would indicate obviously a weakness that we've already established. So really cue on your guys, get your hips up, get your hips up. You wanna get the hips should be the highest, arguably the point of the body in this exercise, okay? So get those hips squeezing and your goal is to be able to hold this position for one minute. Okay, most of you guys are probably pretty good at that. All right, so you can go ahead and lay down. Now the second progression to this, it's, uh, this is actually gonna be, this will actually be the third, this is actually considered level three. Go ahead and drop down. Now we're gonna do a single leg version of this, all right? So you raise one leg up in the air, keep the, keep the uh, quads parallel to each other. So now raise up single leg. All right, so you're gonna feel the hip flexor on the leg that's up and you're gonna feel the glute and the extensors on the leg that's on the floor. All right, bring it up a little bit higher. Up, 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 there you go. Again, your goal on these is to be able to hold this for a minute. Okay, so this might be a little bit more difficult for some of your guys, so work up to it. All right, you can go down. All right, so what we'll do with our guys is we'll hold 30 seconds one leg, alternate 30 seconds on the other leg, and we'll do three sets of that back to back on, on uh, each side. Okay, so that's, that's the hardest progression of that one. Um, all right, let's roll it over on your hands and knees. Okay, how many of you guys know what bird dogs are? All right, cool. So we're going to do bird dogs. Um, all you're going to do is you're going to go opposite elbow, opposite knee. They're going to touch underneath you, and then you're going to extend out, thinking that you've got a steel rod going from your heel through the center of your body, out your fingertips. All right, so elbow, knee. Extend and hold down just a little bit right there. Perfect. Hold it about a 1,001 and then repeat. Okay, and you're going to work up to do 15 reps on each side. Okay, elbow, knee, and extend. Elbow, knee, and extend. Holding that position at the top. Yeah, you, so when you're doing these as well, you want to imagine that you're balancing a glass of water between your shoulder blades. So there shouldn't be a lot of rotation of the torso. The head should be neutral, kind of looking straight ahead. And the, and the upper back is flat, okay? Stabilize them with your, uh, with your back. Okay, don't go so much up. Go more straight out right there. All right, so you work your way up to where you're able to do three sets of 15 with good good quality reps, all right? And if you, uh, once you progress to that, now, I'll tell you what, we're gonna, we're gonna continue on with this uh, bird dog. Stand up. This is like the most difficult version of a bird dog. So, it's a standing bird dog. You're gonna stand on one leg, about a quarter squat. My back is parallel to the ground. And now I'm gonna bird dog for one leg. Touch, extend, hold it. Back in, touch. Extend and hold it. Now, I'm feeling it here, but in about three or four reps, I'm really going to start feeling it on the leg that I'm stabilizing with. And you can see I'm slightly shaking, and that's that hip having to stabilize my body, okay? So here, touch, extend. If you notice, if your athletes are doing these and they're drooped here, then they, then they need to work on that strength to get it up. But this is going to be one of the hardest progressions. So give it a shot. Maybe hard, maybe impossible some of you guys, but that's all right. Again, imagine balancing a glass of water between the shoulder blades. <laughs> Keep that back nice and flat. Like I said, imagine that glass of water sitting between your shoulder blades. Again, working up to three sets of 15 on these. Again, this would be the, the hardest progression of the bird dog series. So back to the original test uh, that we did, the first test we did. Anybody remember what it was? When you're testing your team, what, what do we test? Just standing on one leg. All right, so that's, that's going to be your first progression of exercise. Stand on one leg. Can you hold it for a minute? Can you stand on balance for one minute? If you can't, obviously work up to that. The next one, a partial squat hold. Hold that for a minute. All right. And then what you can do is you can go an elevated step down. All right, so you can get a box. You can do it on a bench, whatever. Stack up some plates if you don't have either. Stand on the box. 
the leg's gonna come slightly forward and you're just gonna go squats, okay? Again, we wanna make sure the knee is tracking in line with the toe, all right? So just working on the single leg squat, working your way till you're in a full pistol squat, butt on your heel, all the way down, okay? So you're down here and then up. Progression to that, obviously add weight to the hands. Coming up there, work your way up to where you're going three, uh, three to four sets of 10 to 12 reps on those, not to really smoke your hips and quads, all right? All right, let's get back on the ground. All right, I'm gonna show you guys real quick with my demonstrator here, the, the drop test. I'm gonna show you um, how to really do that with manual resistance. Okay, so again, we wanna get him back in that position, hand in the lower back. If you open your hand up, your thumb is gonna lay right on the muscle group we wanna activate. So hand on the love handle, thumb at the top of the glutes. All right, you can feel when he activates. So when I bring him up, hold, I'm feeling that muscle tighten. So that's a good way to cue if the guy is doing it right or if he's turning on the muscle we want. All right, hold there. Now I'm just gonna push him straight to the ground. We're gonna go 10 reps on this. All right, fight me. Good, we just want good, slow, eccentric load. Pushing him down, making him fight against you. If he starts getting fatigued, his tendency is gonna to wanna to be to open up. That's why you keep him turned forward, okay? Don't let him turn, don't let him open up. All right, come on, do four more. And I'm feeling right what's where I want him activating. I'm feeling that muscle turning on and tightening up. All right, just slow eccentric as we go down. All right, you can feel that right there, huh? Yeah. All right, so let's everybody do that because there's a couple coaching things I want to make sure we're, we're getting right. Head in the back, pushing him down. Push, pushing the lower back forward, abduct and extend on the leg, and then push the leg straight down. Fight him on the way down. So, yeah, so you want to you be here and you want to push him straight down to your, to your foot. Right there, good. And you can feel him tur turn it on right there, yep. On the outside? Oh, uh, really? Good. See how you kind of open up your knees bent? You want, to, you want to make sure he keeps you rolled right there. All right, so here we go. I'm going to show you guys the, uh, the next uh, progression. Or if y'all want to do the other partner, that's fine. All right, so the next uh, progression we're going to do is just a side plank, okay? A lot of you guys may be doing this as, as, uh, as part of your strength training programs in your school. All right, face me. And it's really just going to be a side plank from this, for, you know, on the ground. All right, so hips up. Now, if they're, they're having difficulty balancing, you can stagger the feet if you need to. I prefer to do it stacked. Um, all right, so this is the first one. So you just hold this position for a minute. Once you get to where you can hold for a minute, obviously add a progression into it. We'll go to a top leg abduction, straight up, squeeze. Now, if you notice his toe kind of goes up, that's activating more hip flexor. We want to keep it flat. Imagine that glass of water sitting on the side of the foot and you'll really feel that in those abductors. So down, just give me like three or four abduction raises. Good. All right, another coaching point. If you notice his uh, shoulder position, he was kind of hunching forward from the shoulder. You want to really maintain that posture and upright, there you go, perpendicular. You don't want to hunch forward. You don't want to get the hips pushed back. You know, a lot of times you'll see kids and they'll kind of get in this like hunched over position, you know, here, because they can't hold. Upright, perpendicular, perpendicular. All right, now the third progression is a, is a side bird dog. So you're gonna go top elbow, top knee, extend up and basically end up in kind of like a star pattern. Touch and extend, touch and extend. All right, let's try that. From the plank, yeah. Perfect, a little bit higher with the leg, but other than that, right there, keep that toe turned over. Good. A little bit, little bit straighter with the shoulders, you kind of hunch, that's it. All right, so that's the third, that's the third progression. Give that a shot, guys. Just kind of see what, what level of difficulty is. Go plank first, then go the abduction raise, and then go the, uh, the star. Now, let's talk a little bit about the old, the old uh, saying of, oh man, this guy's got tight hips, or this guy can't play because he's too tight in the hips. What does that mean? How do you determine 
how do you determine whether somebody has tight hips or not? So what constitutes a tight hip? All right, so I'm gonna show you a couple uh, tests and then exercises to stretch your hips. All right, all right, grab on both of them. All right, so this is gonna test uh, hip flexor flexibility. All right, now I want you to take this leg, just let it hang off the end of the table. Hold on to the knee, right there. I just let you can just let your knee relax. All right, so he's obviously got adequate flexibility here. If he didn't, in this position, this knee would be raised up off the table because he'd be too tight in the hip flexor. Okay, so if you've got somebody that can't, they, if they can't lay with their knee flexed and the knee laying on the table, if it's rising up or it's just kind of floating in the air, that would indicate tightness in that hip flexor. You need to work on flexibility with your guys. Possibly could be a potential for a pull. All right, so that's the hip flexor. Now we're talking about the back uh, in the in the in the uh, in the glutes. Okay, so go a piriformis stretch here, knee crossed over, um, ankle right behind the knee, bend here, and push him back, okay? If they have any pain, or if it's very difficult for him, he's got pretty good flexibility, but say I only get him to right here and he's screaming, and that's as far as I can push, now might indicate tightness back here, okay? So these are two tests to figure out what is a tight hip, okay? Obviously, you can always increase and improve flexibility, I got, a, I got a fighter, he was a wrestler in college. The guy can put his shin bone underneath his neck and I can flatten him out on the table. Uh, so that might be on the extreme end of it, but these stretches are, can be important for helping you guys uh, get some flexibility in your guys. Um, all right, so that kind of concludes most of the exercise stuff. Any thoughts, questions um, about any of the exercises we showed? I was telling the last group, you don't have to do all of them in the same day work through maybe one or two exercises a day, you know, every day of the week, take you five or six minutes, but over a period of time, it'll start adding up and you really start to notice those knees starting to, you know, feel better. If you got IT band problems, they'll start getting better. Tendonitis issues will start going away. Um, and then obviously the, the most important thing is the stability. You know, when you see them do a single leg squat, instead of doing that, they're going to be nice and locked in, strong, tracking in the knee. Obviously, that's going to signify stronger hips, less chance for injury.